Welcome to a brief demonstration of the Hardcat Web Interface. Hardcat Web is an extension of the Hardcat Asset Management System delivered to the user via a web browser rather than a Windows application. Hardcat Web allows easy access to the most frequently used functions in Hardcat. You are able to update Hardcat for day-to-day -day activities including your assets, maintenance work orders, help desk problems and updating your stock inventory. Asset Management Once you've logged into the web interface, you'll be directed to the Asset Management screen. Here you can see all of your assets and some of their attributes. On each asset line, you have the ability to view, edit, delete, or print your asset. Above this, you have the ability to add multiple filters. Using these different filters, you can restrict your asset list to only a certain asset type. You can also change the order listing of your assets by multiple different keys. To navigate through the different pages of assets, simply click on the page number. Towards the left hand side of the screen you have multiple options. Here you can create an asset, move an asset, move assets to a cost center, move assets to a location, move assets to a person, move assets to a supplier, scan items in and out of a store using the issue and return component, or show your assets on a map. Let's begin by viewing an asset. In this view you can see all of the asset details. Let's now edit the asset. Here you can modify all of the details of the asset. Once you have completed all of your modifications, simply click on save. Let's now view our assets on a map. Whichever assets have GPS coordinates assigned to them will come up on the map. Highlight the assets, click on show map and here are our assets in the whole world. Problem Management Once you've logged into the web interface, click on the Problem Management button. You will be directed to the Problem Management screen with a list of all of your open problems. On each problem line you can view, edit, delete, or print the problem. Above this you can add multiple different filters. Using these different filters you can restrict the list of problems down to a certain type. You can also change the order listing of your problems by many different keys. To navigate through the different pages of problems simply click on the corresponding page number. Towards the left hand side of the screen you have various options. You can create a problem, you can show all of the problems associated assets on a map. You can perform bulk operations. These operations can be customized to perform specific functions such as reassigning engineers, updating the priority or updating the status of all your problems. Let's now view a problem. Here you can see all of the details of the problem. Let's edit the problem. Here you can edit all of the details of the problem. You can also create new actions to assign to the problem. I'm going to create an action called send the engineer. This action has now been created against this problem. Let's save the problem. Now the problem has been saved. Work order management. Once you've logged into the web interface, click on the work order management button. You will be directed to the work order management screen with a list of all your open work orders. On each work order line, you are able to view, edit, delete, or print your work order. Above this, you can add multiple different filters. Using these different filters, you can restrict the list of work orders to a certain work order type. You can also change the order listing of your work orders by different keys. You can navigate through the various different pages of work orders by clicking on the corresponding page number. 
Towards the left hand side of the screen you have various options. You can create new work orders, show the work order assigned assets on a map, perform bulk operations. These operations can be customized to perform specific functions such as closing work orders, reassigning an engineer, updating the priority or updating the status of all your work orders. Let's now view a work order. Here you can see all of the details of the work order. Let's now edit the work order. Here you can change all of the work order details. You can also create new actions against the work order. I'm creating an action called issue fixed. Save the action. And now it has been assigned to the work order. Stock management. Once you have logged into the web interface, click on the stock management button. You will be directed to the stock management screen with a list of your stock inventory. On each stock line, you are able to view, edit, delete, or print the stock item. Above this, you are able to add multiple filters. Using these different filters, you can restrict the list of your stock inventory to a certain type. You can change the order of your stock listing by many different keys. To scroll through the multiple pages of stock items, click on the relevant page number. On the left hand side of the screen, we are able to scan items in and out of the store using the issue return component. Let's view a stock item. Here we have all of the details of the stock item. Let's edit this stock item. Here we can update all of the details of the stock item. At the bottom of the screen, within the stock on hand area, we can see where the stock items currently reside. Click on save to save the details. Asset issues and returns. Once you have logged into the web interface, click on the scan item out from store button. The asset issue and return component has been designed to operate simply by using a barcode scanner. Using the barcode scanner, you can scan an entity barcode. An entity can be a person, location or cost center. Once you scan the entity, the interface will automatically recognize the barcode and choose the correct entity for you. Any subsequent asset scanned will be automatically assigned to this entity. Let's start off by scanning a person barcode. My person will be Lars Jorgen. I will now scan some asset barcodes. You will see a running list being generated at the bottom of the screen. This shows each asset and their details being assigned to Lars. Now that these items have been issued to Lars, he will be returning them. Click on the Return Items button. Here you can see that the destination has already been set. This is customizable in Hardcat. I have set the IT storeroom as the destination for all items being returned. Simply scan the asset barcodes being returned. We can see the running list being generated. And now, these three assets have been returned back to the IT storeroom.